Hey everybody, Chris Grandy with another Chris Answers Quora session. And today, so a great question. Um, got the iPad with me to do that. What types of investments are good for leaving your child an inheritance? So let's just have a little quick discussion. First off, let's start, let's break it down to if you're older, younger, and if you um, are trying to minimize taxes for yourself or for your kids. So first off, let's say you're younger. You want to leave an inheritance. I think the obvious question, everybody would know this, but it's right in front of you, is life insurance. You know, if you were 28, get young kids, just had just had starting a family, you want to leave an inheritance for your kids, life insurance. Now, you don't have the assets already, more than likely, unless you inherited some, or you're, I don't know, some kind of super successful person, good for you. Uh, if not, life insurance. So that would be the easiest way, term life insurance, the most inexpensive way to get it done. And then secondly, uh, I would add that is if you do plan on leaving, say, a million dollar life insurance policy and some other assets for the benefit of your kids, consider uh, talking to an estate planning attorney and getting a trust set up or some kind of set up with a, um, some kind of legal setup where the money would be protected from anything frivolous happening. Next part I want to discuss then, that may lead on to the next part. Likely this is probably the perspective of somebody a little bit older, maybe 50s, 60s, 70s asking this question, uh, what's the best uh, asset to leave your kids? Uh, an inheritance. And so what I want to ask here is, is are you trying to maximize, minimize your taxes or your kids' taxes? So for example, there are some assets like stocks, real estate, et cetera, that when you die, they pass on to your, um, to your heirs and all the, ta all the capital gains that you built up over the years owning those assets disappears. It's called stepped up basis. So if you own Apple stock and you bought it for 10 bucks and now it's worth, you know, 260 and you die tomorrow, your child can inherit that Apple stock, sell it immediately and pay no tax. Yeah, I understand. You bought it at 10, now it's worth 260. If you sold it, you'd have a capital gain of $250 per share. But um, if you die and leave that to the kids, it's a stepped up basis or leave it to anybody. It's a stepped up basis and they could sell it for the next day at 260 and their cost basis is 260, meaning no tax. So if you're trying to minimize the kids tax, capital assets are a good idea. If you're trying to minimize your taxes, then you might think of it differently. So for example, um, let's just say the kids have, or your, your children have a lower income or, or not as high an income tax bracket as you are. You're pretty successful. You have higher income, you have lots of assets, you have retirement assets, you have stock, you own real estate. Um, so what you're trying to might be trying to do is minimize the taxes. You know, if you're in the 30% bracket, 35, you know, 40% combined bracket with, you know, with state and federal, you're trying not to pay taxes now because maybe your kids can inherit it and their tax brackets lower. In this situation, you would consider leaving, um, you know, you would consider maybe not trying not to use your IRA money to not incur the taxes, not using your retirement accounts and other things like that. So that, and leave the IRAs to the kids, okay? IRAs are not, do not benefit from stepped up basis. When the kids inherit that and they take money out of the IRA, they will pay an income tax. It doesn't work like stock and real estate, et cetera. So in that case, you might want to try to take the minimum out of your IRAs required, don't live off of it and leave it to the kids. That way, you know, if when they inherit it, they'll pay, they'll pay tax on the withdrawals at their lower income tax rate. And then if you're trying to keep your income tax to a minimum, because you know, when you're older, Things like uh, Medicare benefits, uh, the premiums on Medicare, things like social, you know, the, the premiums on Medicare get, you get charged a higher Medicare premium if your income is too high. Your social security gets taxed more if your income is too high. You lose the ability to, you further uh, diminish the ability to deduct medical expenses if your income is too high. There are just a slew of, of things, you know, um, if your income is high and you have capital gains, you know, there's a possibility of paying surcharge taxes. So there are lots of things you want to avoid when your income is high. And, you know, playing the inheritance game might be one way to do that. So you might use either annuitized annuities or a um, um, uh, reverse mortgage on your house or maybe selling a little bit of stock or something like that might be the way you would provide additional income for yourself and your, you would leave your um, accumulated annuities and your um, uh, your IRAs, et cetera, to the kids to minimize the taxes. So that's really the, the key here. So first off, let's recap what I said. If you're younger, you wanna leave an inheritance to the kids, 
insurance is most likely way to go. Likely term insurance, and then also think about um, think about the capital gain. Think about the um, what do you call it? The idea, possibility with estate planning of putting the insurance on a trust. Second part was okay. You're an older person. You want to leave your kids the inheritance. What's the best way to do this? And so the first thing you want to consider is um, do you want to um, do you want to have pay lower taxes and let the kids handle a higher tax burden, or do you want to take care of most of the taxes and leave the kids with uh, with less taxed assets or non taxed assets? And again, that could be a function of how you feel about them. It could also be a function of what makes the most sense based on what your income tax bracket is versus the kids and playing around the tax brackets that way, all right? Um, you know, uh, you, you also didn't think about possibly leaving money to grandkids and they might be in a very low tax bracket. That might be another way that you might want to smartly organize this so that you leave the assets to the right person in your um, trust, in your beneficiary documents in your will so that you minimize family taxation. And uh, I talk a lot about this in some other videos and some other things, but when we do financial planning in our firm, it encompasses the entire family, multiple generations. So if you're looking at a multi-generational view, there is a way to utilize multiple generations to get the least tax hit possible on your entire family. So there are ways to do that. You just gotta think about it. And so when it comes to leaving kids assets, you wanted to know Am I trying to minimize my taxes for the for re, for good reasons, or am I trying to ma minimize the taxes the kids are going to pay? Um, and then that'll that'll help decide which way you go. If you have any more questions, let me know. If you like this video, click like. If you want to subscribe for more videos like this and my entrepreneur interviews and other financial videos, please do that. And also, if you have any questions, drop them down below or send us a, a comment in the comment form. Especially if you have an individual question, uh, sometimes some people ask me a question that's very individualized. Feel free to do that um in a comment form and i can answer you privately again thanks again so much everybody for watching appreciate it have a great night